Hey guys, welcome to the lesson here at THSS Technology. Uh, today we're going to move back into our Unity top-down shooter game and we're going to create a, a laser spawning and shooting script for our players. So let's just do a quick recap of what we have so far. We've got cubes flying around the screen, we've got boundary sets, and this is kind of where we left off the last lesson. So what we want to do today is we want to create a laser for our player to shoot and then we also want to make it so that uh, the laser is controlled by the player itself in terms of the, the, the player gets to choose when the laser is being shot. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our laser game object. So I'm going to go up here to the hierarchy, I'm going to right click, and I'm just going to create a simple uh, capsule object here. Uh, of course you're going to want to create your own pixel art laser, but uh, we're just going to use this placeholder art for now. And I'm going to set the scale to 0.25 uh, all the way around for our laser. You can see it down in the game window there. And then let's just take this mat that I made, this green mat, very lasery in color, and drop it onto our game object so now our laser has a color to it. Okay, excellent. Uh, now, of course, the laser isn't going to do anything right now. Um, let's just name it laser, actually. But if we go to play our game, the laser will just kind of sit there and it won't do anything, we can't really interact with it, uh, but worry about that later. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, create a new script so our laser is just gonna move forward um, uh, once the game starts. So I'm gonna go down to my scripts folder, I'm gonna right click, we're gonna create a new C-sharp script, and we're just gonna call that script laser. Now I'm gonna open up this laser script here, and uh, this laser script itself is actually be extremely straightforward. It'd be the exact same code we're gonna use to make our enemy move. Uh, so we're just gonna go transform, Dot translate, and then we're going to transform to translate. We're going to do a vector three dot up because we want to move it up the screen, and we're going to times that by time dot delta time, and then we will multiply that by speed as well. Of course, we now need to make a public float for speed. And let's save that. And now let's go back into Unity. And let's take our laser script, drag it onto our laser, and we can set our speed now to let's say five. And let's click play. And just in the bottom is there. There we go. We can see our laser shoot across the screen down here at the bottom. Okay, perfect. So the laser script is working, it's moving, really straightforward. Once again, quick little look at the code here. All we did was add the vector three up transform to translate, and then we created a public float for speed to so we can define how quick we want the laser to go. Pretty much identical to our enemy script that we created a few lessons ago. Okay. The next thing we're going to do now is we're going to take this laser that I've made. It's kind of a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a good little laser here. It works as intended, and we're going to turn that into what's called a prefab. Prefab just means prefabricated, and we're, we're it's kind of like a blueprint for a game object. So we're the the, the benefits of making a prefab is you can call that in other scripts to uh, to, to to summon or to uh, to bring forth into your game. And, uh, and because it's a blueprint, it'll just kind of create the exact same game object over and over again. So in order to make a prefab, we're going to right click on my assets folder and we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this prefabs, okay? And then I'm going to take my laser game object up, up here in my hierarchy and drag it down to my prefabs folder. And there we can see my laser down in my prefabs folder. We can actually delete it from the scene now. And now if we go to play, we can take our laser from the prefab and kind of drag it into our scene and every time we drag it into the scene it is going to spawn and move up on the screen. Okay, excellent. So the laser is working as intended. Uh, once it is spawned it is shot uh, through the north of this, uh, up on the screen and uh, later on we'll add it so it kills the enemy of course but for now the laser is moving. Okay, the next and final step of today's lesson is we need to make it so that when we are playing and, and, and flying our player there in this game, in this case will be eventually be a spaceship, that we can control uh, how the laser spawn and when's it, when it spawns. So in order to do that, we're going to open up our player controller script, okay? Because in the player controller script, if we have a little look here, uh, we have it set so whenever we press the horizontal or the vertical, uh, we're moving left and right and up and down. Um, so we want to be able to do something very similar for when we are shooting the laser. So I'm going to put it in the update because I want it to be constantly checking for when the laser is spawned. Okay, so let's just comment this out and put that we're activating the laser here. 
Now, as normally, uh, whenever you're trying to create a, a, a new function for your game or uh, looking for some new code, I always recommend going to the Unity API. Um, that's what I did in order to create this lesson. And uh, the, the, the code that we're going to look here is something called Instantiate. Instantiate is uh, how you uh, summon or how you create a game object uh, from, a, from a prefab. Okay, so it kind of brings a game object into your game, even if it's not in the hierarchy. And that's kind of the benefit of using prefabs there. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use the instantiate command here. So if I just start, start to type instantiate, okay, and what do I want to instantiate? Well, uh, I want to instantiate my uh, laser, okay? So I want to instantiate my laser there, okay? And, um, okay, that makes sense. And now, of course, this isn't actually going to work, but let's kind of put it in right here and let's see what happens if I try to click play. It's going to give me an error here, uh, and it's going to say the, the term laser actually does not exist. And the reason why it doesn't exist is it doesn't know when I'm saying laser that I'm meaning this laser over here. Okay? So, very much like when we use the term speed, we had to define speed up here as a public. So let's create another public. We're not creating a float here. We're not working with a number. We're creating a public game object. And we're going to call that game object laser. Okay. Um, so now uh, we got our public flow speed and we got our public game object laser. So when I click on laser here, it's going to know I'm referring to this laser up here. Excellent. So let's go back into Unity now. Let's click on our player. And now it's going to be looking for, it's going to tell me, ask me, what is the laser? It's looking for a game object. So I take my laser from the prefabs and drag it in. So now if I click play, oh, okay. Well, um, as you can see, uh, we are definitely spawning lasers here, but it is spawning them endlessly. In fact, it's spawning them every single frame. And the reason why it's doing that is that we are just instantiating the laser in the update. So it's just constantly spawning our laser endlessly. So that's working, but it's not necessarily working how we want it to work. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create an if statement, just like how we created our boundaries here. We're going to set a condition for when and how the laser spawns. So we're going to do an if statement, and we're going to do an if statement. And we're going to be looking for input, just like we did here for the get axis. We're going to look for if input, okay? Because we're looking for input, what the player is doing, and the code we're going to use is called get key down, okay? And I found this out by just going to the Unity API again. So if the key down. If you're looking for a certain key down, we're gonna and then we're gonna look for a certain key code, okay? And the key code we're gonna look for is space. So what that's meaning is if the space key is pressed. So we're looking for input, and we're looking for input if the key is held down, if you're pressed down the key. And what key? Well, the key code is space, and you could place that with any value there. You could put like uh, the you know number A or one on the keypad. It doesn't really matter. It's just any type of key that you want to designate. But I'm gonna use the space button for my fire. So if the input get key down space is pressed, what do we want to do? Well, let's put in our brackets here and let's take this instantiate laser here, copy and paste that in, and let's save that now and let's go see what happens in the game. So remember before it spawned endlessly. Now if I play, I can move around, nothing's happening. Okay, it's working. So I'm pressing the space key right now, as you can see, but it's not really working perfectly because it's spawning the lasers, yes, when I press space, but it's not spawning them from where my player is. It's just spawning them at zero, zero, and zero. And the reason why it's doing that, our laser prefab has a position of zero, zero, and zero. Therefore, it's spawning our lasers at that position. So we need to add another element into our script here. So we're going to instantiate the laser, but we're going to instantiate the laser at transform.position. Okay, and what that's going to do, it's going to spawn it at our game object that this script is attached to, which is the player. It's going to uh, try, it's going to instantiate it at its location. So if I click save there, go back into Unity. Oh, now it's saying we're actually getting an error. Okay, and the reason why we're getting an error, and this is something that you're just going to have to look up inside of the Unity API, is if we're, if we're instantiating the transform.position, we need to start looking at its rotational value then. Okay. And the reason why we need to look at rotational value is, um, it, well, we won't go into details right here, but the rotational value we're going to set to is called quaternion.identity. And essentially, this is just telling the object that we are not going to be rotating. And we do need to put that in anytime we are uh, involving a changing transform position. Okay? 
So for just the sake of argument, just know that we need to put in the quaternion identity for its rotational value. Let's go check, see if that fixes our error. Go back to our game, click play, it's gonna work this time, I can move around. And now the laser is gonna spawn wherever my player's ship is. All right, so working pretty well, excellent. But you can see up here at the screen, the lasers are essentially being spawned endlessly. They're never getting destroyed and they are not destroying our enemies either. But that will be a lesson for another day. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching and we will see you all later.